Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. We thank the Lord for all that he has done so far in this service and welcome you to the Bethesda Churches and Champion Center Church. And we thank God for the worship that has taken place thus far, and we are ready to give you a word from God. I want to just first celebrate out all of the all of the service workers who have been participating in our trainings. I have some big news for all of you. The church is opening back up Independence Weekend. We are excited to invite you back into the Bethesda churches. Um, it will be at Bethesda Central for a one service, 11 o'clock service, and we will be sending messages on, out on how you can register for that service. Amen. So if you're on social media, obviously you're watching this. I want you to celebrate that out, that the church is opening back up during this Independence Day weekend coming the first weekend in July. That will also be a time when we do our communion, and so we are excited about it. We're being trained right now and making sure that everything is fit and done according to the way the state wants it, CDC wants it, um, so that we can open up and get back to the worshiping of our living Savior in the congregation of the assembly. So we are excited about that. Please like and share right now. And I need you to tell 100 people. You got at least 100 friends on Facebook. Tell 100 people Bethesda's opening back up on um, Independence Day weekend. We also celebrate that this is Juneteenth. Um, week in a time in which we celebrate and are in jubilee for the last state, uh, Texas, which was succeeding from the Union, um, that um, the message came by General Granger that the f slaves are free. And so that took place, amen, on the uh, 19th, as it were, of June, and we want to make sure that we're celebrating that. That's 1865, in which that message was sent, and we're still celebrating today. I also want you to know that we are blessed. I want you to know that we are blessed. I want you to know that we are blessed. In fact, you can type that in. We are blessed. I don't want you to think that as we lean into this time and seek for a better way and seek for America to meet its destiny um, and to grow into the great stature that is going to grow, that we are at all dis, uh, discouraged about um, being blessed. We are blessed um, in Jesus Christ, and we want to honor that and push that out there. Um, I also want you to know, and um, this, these are sometimes I'll, I'll say something before I say it just to prepare you to put on your seatbelt. Um, there are some that want you to be um, just in despair about where you are as an American citizen. And I want you to know that the things that we're seeing make us not feel good, um, but don't be in despair. Just know that we are moving forward. So as you, as you see the signs of the times taking place, know that the rapture is soon to come and it's for you to get your house right. Amen. And before I preach, I do want to uh, call out a couple of things. Um, a week ago, uh, one of our dear sisters, Sister Michelle, her son was rushed to the hospital. And then just yesterday, I believe, Sister Lorraine's son was rushed to the hospital. Um, both are doing okay. We want to make sure that we're praying for them. Uh, Sister LaFall uh, is not feeling good. We want to pray for her. Also, uh, we want to pray for Sister Mocha not feeling well, uh, going through some things. We want to make sure that the saints know that we are praying for them. So at this time, if you could just stand with me in a touch and agree moment, that we touch and agree for the blessings of all of them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we glorify you and thank you as Savior, healer, and provider. I come asking, Lord, that you turn the situation around with our sons. Bring our sons back, dear Lord God, to full health. Bring our sons back, dear Lord God, to full physical health and spiritual health, Lord. And we pray for those who are sick and shut in and ask that you would work a work in their body, work a work in, dear Lord God, their blood, dear Lord God, their veins, their ligaments, muscles, dear Lord God, whatever it is, turn it around. Their major organs, minor organs, whatever it is, turn it around. Lord, we pray, dear Lord God, for the salvation of souls during this season. 
And we have a work to do. And we can't do it if we're all beat down. So, dear Lord God, raise up. Dear Lord God, give your people strength during this last season before your coming. We are trusting you for the complete victory. And we touch and agree with those souls that they are healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. We do have a word for you today. And I want you to keep me in good prayer. I left my glasses at home. So I'm going I'm to really need the Holy Ghost to show, shine a light from heaven on my soul. But I want you to turn to Judges chapter 7. The, 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 the series that we're in right now is called Who's Next? Who's Next for a Breakthrough? Who's Next for Deliverance? Who's Next for a Healing? Who's next to come out? And I believe this nation is next. I believe our city is next. I believe our children are next. I believe our families are next. So turn to Gideon, uh, excuse me, uh, Judges chapter 7. And the topic of my sermon this morning is I have a dream. I have a dream. The Bible says in verse number 12, and the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that was that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley, of bread, tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it and it fell and overturned it. And the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, the man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the hosts. Verse 15. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hands the host of Midian. Can you say amen? The topic today, I have a dream. There is something worse than racism in this country. And I know that right now on everybody's mind is about racism, 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 racism. And in fact, that word has been overused and has been misappropriately used. And I've seen it used in cases where somebody didn't agree with you, so they must be racist. All of a sudden, I felt some help, so I'm going to push hard this morning. Just because I disagree with you don't make a person racist. Racism is a power word, and it actually deals with one group having authority or power over another and subjugating another group. I can't be racist if I'm on the same playing field as you because I have nothing to keep you from. I don't have any power over you. The black man is sitting at the bus stop. The white man is sitting at the bus stop. The Latin is sitting at the bus stop. The Asian is sitting at the bus stop. The Asian looks over at the Latino and calls him a nasty name. The Latino looks over at the black man and called him a nasty name. The white man looked over at the Asian and called him a nasty name. And all of them called each other a nasty name. So somebody said, that's racism. But I beg to differ. That's called ignorance. Because when the bus driver drives up, guess what? All of them got to catch the bus. But when the bus driver opens up the door and says, only you can come in, now that's racism. Because now I'm withholding or keeping and using power to bring you under subjection. But in this world of political correctness, there is also a diluting of what the real purpose should be. There are groups that are hijacking the I Dream movement to bring in this other sort of sinful stuff that have nothing to do with the equality of black people. 
I call all black people listening to me, go ahead and put it in a party. Don't allow people to ride the backs of a pure movement and make it their own. We've been prostituted too long like that. And so anytime somebody else wants to get something done in their community, they run and try to get us irritated in the black community. And now we out tearing up our own streets, tearing up our own grocery stores, tearing up our own businesses. The devil is an absolute lie. I'm telling you, it's not of God and it don't even make good sense. So now as I lean into this, I want to let you know again that racism is not the number one issue in America. The number one issue right now in America is ignorance and a lack of love. I'll say that again, it's ignorance and a lack of love. You see, racism finds its boundaries in ignorance. And even those that are not ignorant while in it, some of it is used to support another agenda. Lord, have mercy, help me preach this morning. Understand, if I'm ignorant, there are at least three levels of ignorance that you have to know about. Number one is what I call pure ignorance. And that is when someone genuinely does not know. You don't know what you don't know. So then I can't be mad at you because you don't know if you just simply have not been exposed. But then there is another type of ignorance and is the in ignorance that is uncomfortable. And that is when I find out I don't know, do I have the courage to want to know? I think most of Americans are in that group. They're ignorant particularly about some things about race and about other people, but they're a little bit uncomfortable with the conversation because I don't want to offend and because I don't want to feel this hurt that might I feel because of the hurt of my ancestors. So therefore I'm uncomfortable. And if I'm not careful, I'll set it aside and remain in ignorance. But then there is a different level of ignorance and that's somebody who want to be ignorant. Somebody that will shout you down. And, and, I, and I'm very sensitive to this as a preacher because although right now all the topic is about justice and injustice and all, and all of those important topics, I've seen it happen to me when I'm out on the street witnessing and I'm trying to share the faith and somebody comes and try to shout you down. And because they disagree with my position in the scripture, they try to shout you down. So rather than debate with me, you want to shout me down and take away my First Amendment right because you want to have your First Amendment right be intruding on everybody else's life. But I want you to know that's a form of ignorance that we can't tolerate. Everyone has to come to the table and there has to be a discussion. And I have to lean into how you're experiencing life and you have to lean into mine. And you can't be suspicious of me when I'm presenting my particular, amen, perception about life. See, the ignorance factor brings me to history. And before I move to history, then there has to be love. Because if I don't love my neighbor as I love myself, I'll find myself with my knee on their neck. Can you say amen? If I don't love with the love of God, my love won't have the patience that it needs because I'm hearing a lot of impatience among people. I believe that America is the greatest nation in the world and it's going to be a more moral and better nation after we have these conversations and put some truth in place. But please don't get it twisted. It takes love in order to do this work. You have to love your neighbor first. If you already don't love me, you're not going to listen to me. If you already don't love me, you don't want to hear what I got to say. And the reason why some people have taken to violence is because they have felt unheard for years. I know what it feels like. By the way, I've been black all my life. Amen. I don't know. I mean, people act like you just got black. I've been black all my life. I've had freckles all my life. So I've been in this skin all my life and I know the pressures that take place when you go into a room and people automatically think that you're uneducated because of your skin. 
I know what it feels like to walk into a room with affluent people and they think you broke because of your skin. I know what it feels like to have to work harder at a job just to make sure I was on level with everybody else. But that does not eliminate the knowledge that I have that there is a dream that I need to have. Ah, uh, yes, I feel good in my soul. Understand, in the Here's History portals, I, I began to do a little research and found out that the first black church was established before this United States was even a United States. Yes, the first African Baptist church down in Savannah, Georgia, founded by George Lau and our, our minister of music, Chris, he used to go to Second Baptist Church, but this is the first Baptist church. And it, it was established along the lines of 1773. Lord have mercy. There were already, Lyles was already getting people together to worship and they didn't want them to worship. So he moved down the river a little further until he can get the approval for them to begin to worship. And then when they put him out there, he moved to Jamaica and started a congregation until some of the people that he taught came back and they established the first African Baptist church down in Savannah. If he could do that then, we can do it now. Uh, yeah, we can find a way to worship. We can find a way to lift up this, li the, the, this living Savior as it were. Yes, this took place all in a time in which the Civil War, excuse me, the Revolutionary War was about to break up. Before America was even a nation, black people were getting together and worshiping God. And I don't know what's going on right now, but I want you to know we need to worship God. You see, this nation, a part of our African-American fiber, and I'm speaking to everybody this morning. I'm speaking to Latins. I'm speaking to white folk. I'm speaking to all of you. I want you to know that in the fabric of the true black community is a God. Oh, yes, there's a God. Amen. And what, and what some of you have done, you've been sifted away by all of these political influences who don't want God in your life. They want to be your God. They want to speak about what's moral and what's not. But the devil is a lie. I'm praying that I can win at least 50 people that are watching this to say we got to take back our right as a people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So that was the first church. And then I noticed, amen, from my own history studies that there was Crispus Attucks. Crispus Attucks, the first man killed in the revolutionary fight before there was even a war in 1770. You had the Boston Massacre. We call it the Boston Massacre. Only five people were killed, but it was a massacre at that time. Crispus Attucks, a black man that fleed away, got his freedom, amen, from, from England and for fear, he began to flee away and got away and was a part of the seals, as it were, at the time uh, and working on the docks and when there was a confrontation between British soldiers and um, the, the people of that time, uh, he was the first one shot. So when you talk about the blood of African people in this country, it stems before this country was even a country I want you to take your history back hey amen why am I bringing this up because they want you to live in the last 30 years and not the last 400 years and they want you to think the last 400 years didn't have no victory but I come to change the narrative today because I got a dream Oh uh, yes, I got a dream today. Glory be to God. But not just Christmas addicts. I, I took note as well that, that the NAACP have put out some information as it were on, on the, on the power, um, on, on the power of those, uh, who had come uh, before and the information about lynchings. And so I began to study down about all of the lynchings that were taking place after the Civil War. Which brings me to one great, one great uh, man, man of God, Alexander Twilight. Now, Alexander Twilight, uh, he lived from 1795 to June 19, June 19, 1857. Now, he was an American educator, minister, and politician. He was the first African American man known to have earned a bachelor's degree, and I want you to take note of this. He did it in 1836. 
Why am I bringing that up to you? When we talk about our kids in education, there's no reason for us to be so behind in education when the first graduate was in 1836. They want you to think that we just crossed the river. I want you to know that we already crossed that river. It's time to go on to some bigger and greater things. This man of God, he fought in the Civil War and he worked in the state legislator for the freedom of all people. That name again, I give it to you, Alexander Twilight. Now, somebody unknowingly put on the post this morning that Abraham Lincoln had slaves, but in all the research that I found, he did not have slaves he was against slavery but he was not an abolitionist please take note that Abraham Lincoln and the abolitionist party the ticket that he ran in was the Republican Party I got to work right now amen amen y'all didn't like hearing that but it was the Republican Party that was the one actually fighting up against slavery in the time of the mid 18th century so look, I, well, stay with me now understand that also Hiram Rhodes and Revels Rhodes uh, you'll understand that he was the first black senator so when I heard that and as I taught that Elder Randolph it made me think of well who were all the other black senator so I went on the United States Senate website and I found some interesting things watch this that Hiram Revels was the first black senator he was out of Mississippi now wait a minute y'all talk about Mississippi is burning but they had the first black uh, senator then the next one was Blanche Bruce he was a Republican, and, and uh, uh, he was a Republican out of Mississippi. Then I had the next one. He was a Republican out of Massachusetts. His name was Edward Brooke. Then I have the third one, Carol Mosley Braun. Good, amen, amen. And in some in 1993, she was elected as Democrat senator in Illinois. Then we have Barack Obama. Democrat out of Illinois. Then we have uh, Roland Burris. He was a Democrat out of Illinois. Are y'all tracking with me what's happening here? Then we have Tim Scott. He's a Republican out of South Carolina. Then we have William Moe uh, Cohen. He is a Democrat out of Massachusetts. Then we have a a, uh, a Democrat out of New Jersey, Cory Booker, and then we have Kamala Harris, Democrat out of California. Now, when all of these people try to get us all stirred up to be a part of their party, I want you to know justice ain't got a party affiliation. They trying to trick y'all. Stop all of that tricking stuff. Justice needs to be in each party. We need African Americans in both three, all parties, to work for the justice and the liberty of all people. But if you don't know your history, you'll be tied to one group when every group ought to earn your vote. I really feel like going crazy right now. Amen. I'm almost forgetting that I'm on camera. I got some people in the congregation today and I feel all right. Understand that after the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, we had the 13th Amendment, which freed the slaves. The 14th Amendment, which gave them citizenship, the 15th Amendment, which was the right to vote. So right now we need to lean into the voting, but the right to vote was already done. I also want you to know we also furthered that act with the Civil Rights Movement Act of voting. So there's no reason for anyone to act like we still on the plantation unless you are walking in ignorance and bondage uh, because it's time for you to come on off uh, and begin to understand that God has something special for you to do. Can you say amen? Oh yeah. And then I looked down and I, I noticed since we were in Juneteenth, I wanted to really look at this Tulsa, Oklahoma. You see, Juneteenth in 1865, uh, the declaration came from Granger that the slaves were free out of Texas when two years before the Emancipation Proclamation had already taken place. But in Tulsa, 
Tulsa, Oklahoma, just outside in Greenwood, Gurley and some of the other wealthy black men, they bought 40 acres of land and they established what we know now as Black Wall Street, a place in which black people taught themselves, had their own schools, had their own businesses. They weren't crabs in a barrel. They weren't shooting each other. Their families were together. This is possible. Oh, I got a dream today. It is possible. They bartered and exchanged with each other and there was wealth and others mocked it and they were amazed at how wealthy they were and when we talk about the massacre took place for a false accusation of a black man and the white people in the other town came uh, and burnt it down. Did y'all hear what I just said? They burnt it down. I'm trying to make connections with you on what's going on now because there are some that have snuck into what was a pure movement and now they're trying to get us to burn down all of our cities and I'm telling you don't buy into that foolishness it's time for us to hold people accountable who keep trying to prostitute a movement that brings justice to black people trying to use our backs to do it the devil is an absolute lie Oh God, I got to get some help. Amen. I hope somebody online is helping me because I can't hear you. But I want you to understand that we did all of this in 1906 through 1921. In 1906, elders in here, you know that's the Azusa Street movement. So the Holy Ghost was bouncing all over this nation during that time. And finally, we have uh, the rise of the Civil Rights Movement, which said no longer will we be secondhand citizens uh, under the under the thumb of Jim Crow laws that we are going to now push for our freedom but I want you to understand how they did it they didn't do it by knocking nobody upside the head they did it peacefully and they used the constitution and the laws that were on the book at the time to get momentous change in this country now, Dr. Martin Luther King, the, the, the face bearer of the movement, he puts it this way in his, in his message, I have a dream. He says, the marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to a distrust of all white people. Y'all want to love Martin Luther King? Well, listen to what he said. It must not lead us to a distrust of all white people for many of our white brothers as evidenced by their presence here today have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny and that they have come to realize that their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom we cannot walk alone and as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of the civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels and highways and the hotels of the city. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped from their selfhood and robbed of their dignity by signs stating for whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and the Negro in New York believes that he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied. We are not satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. He goes on to say, I am not unminded that some of you have come here out of great trial and tribulation. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells and some of you have come from areas where your guests guess um, your quest quest for freedom life you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of pro police brutality you have been the veterans and creative suffering 
uh, continue to work with the faith that unearned unearned suffering is redemptive go back to mississippi go back to alabama go back to south carolina go back to georgia go back to louisiana go back to the slums and ghettos of the northern cities no uh, knowing that somehow this situation can and will be changed. I want y'all to hear that. It can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. And say to and I say to you today, my friends, and so even though we face difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I got to stop right there because some of this stuff that people are doing is for another country. I ain't trying to make another country better. I'm trying to make America better. It's deeply rooted in the American dream. He said, I have a dream that one day the nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day the red hills of Georgia, the sons and former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. That one day, even in the state of Mississippi and the state sweltering with heat and injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racist, with this governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day, one, uh, one, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hand with little white boys and little white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream. So if Dr. Martin Luther King had a dream, I'm wondering what is our dream as a church? Do we have a dream to destroy this nation or do we have a dream that this nation will rise up to its calling? Because I believe America, unlike any other nation in the world, has a calling on its life. And it has a calling to be a model of what change can really be. I do not subjugate myself to the stinking thinking uh, that this is just all, uh, amen, a recounting of slavery. I believe that slavery of the physical body is over. I believe that now we got to move to the slavery of the mind. It is my job as a black educator to help my own community. I ain't looking for nobody to come in as a savior. I'm looking for us to raise up our children in the way that they were supposed to be raised. Sick of all of the excuses taking place in the community. When I'm looking at us do great things all over this country. There are more black millionaires now than ever before. More black billionaires than now than ever before. And all of us have gone through this same cycle of pressure. Amen. And sometimes oppression. But I want you to know that there are more good things happening than bad. Oh yes, I know Atlanta is now in an uproar right now, but I want you to know that we're coming to a day where God is going to give us the words and the love and the lack of ignorance to be able to come together and be the nation we were called to be. I believe that it's a nation, amen, that's not just for the white man, it's a nation for the Latin man too. It's a nation for the native man too. It's a nation for the black man too. So I'm wondering why all the divisive language when right now we need each other more than ever. You see, the Lord has allowed and he's been speaking through time, but clearly some of you on your internet ain't been listening with your ignorant self you ain't been listening because when a storm comes through ain't nobody worried about racism amen so why are we now dividing ourselves up in tribes uh, when we need to come together well what i found out is that we can't come together except we agree lord help me preach right now you see i can't come into a unity with you if you don't agree 
So the Bible gives us a scripture today. I'm already humming, huh? I didn't realize I was humming right now. Amen. The Lord gave us a scripture, Ola Connie's, today about Gideon. And what Gideon did was uh, he went to the Lord expecting uh, for the Lord to put together an army for him. But the Lord needed him to know you can't take everybody with you. You have to cut down some people out because they're not ready for this journey. Amen. And I'm telling some of you movement leaders, you need to look around and if somebody ain't on message, you need to rebuke them in public and on tape because they're tainting our beautiful movement. They're making it look like we condone glass windows of innocent business owners be broken. We don't condone that. We don't condone you burning down our beautiful black businesses because you upset. We don't condone people in all of these other movements coming in, bringing in bricks and passing them out to our young black men and telling them and encouraging them to be in a race so that they can have a record on them. We've worked too hard to get to this place to allow your foolishness to ruin a movement. So Gideon had to cut it down. He thought it was going to be 30,000, but the Lord cut it down to 10 and then he cut it down again to 300 I don't know what you got hanging on your life but the Lord is telling somebody you got to cut something off if you truly want the victory you got to cut some things off there's some things you're not going to be able to do in this next season if you want to see the dream fulfilled in your life Lord have mercy help me preach uh, yes Gideon then cuts down to 300 and the moment he cuts it down he looks up at the mountain uh, and the Midian's army was all around the mountain have you ever been in a situation where you said Lord I'm going to do it your way and it seemed like the devil started raging like a roaring lion because sometimes when you decide to do it God's way that's when you're going to reach opposition I do not believe that racism is something we cannot move through I believe that we're right serving right at a place to not just that there will be justice but that people will come to God because you can't truly have justice unless you got God in it can I preach like I feel? Y'all can talk back through the mask up in here. Amen. You can't have justice without God. And the reason why you can't is because he is the moral authority on any one thing. No political group holds a monopoly on morality. And I know that they want to use the word moral, but that's a God term. You can't tell me what moral is unless you got God in your life. You got to know what the king of kings has said about it before you tell me what the say. And many people want to weave you in children of God. I'm calling you back to the house of God. They want to weave you in and have you listen in to them more than you listen to the man of God. More than the, you listen to the word of God. And I rebuke that spirit right now that's trying to pull you you ain't even studied your history and making comments and all of that acting like you an expert you need to calm yourself and sit your hips down and lift up your hands and begin to say lord what are you saying in this season i don't want to know what donald trump is saying in this season i don't want to know what the, the nancy pelosi is saying in the season i don't want to know what these congressmen are saying in the season i don't want to know what this joe biden man is saying in this season i want to know what the lord is saying and i'm nervous about you people who call yourself christian and you are giving more credence to what man says than what god says but i got to shoot it straight to you tonight god ain't gonna put up with that no more and that's why he keeps shaking up the nation and this is what he did to gideon he allowed for gideon to see the nations and the armies all around him but we walk by faith and not by sight children of God you got to believe that it's possible for us to live with our neighbor and there be peace I got to believe that I can live with the Indian I got to believe I can live with the Sikh I got to believe I can live with the Buddhist I got to believe I can live with the Latin I got to believe I can live with a white and we all come together in human unity even when we got different faith 
so I got a dream today that's grounded in the dream that God gave this servant in the book of Judges because the Bible says that as Gideon was pondering going out to battle that he was worried about the armies that he saw looking around he was wondering if anybody would listen to him but God has a way of speaking to unnamed people I feel like preaching right now he'll speak to somebody that ain't even got a name and give them the dream and when you didn't want to fulfill it he'll speak it to them and the Bible says that the man had a dream he said the dream was of that there was a cake of bread and it rolled down into the camp and it went up under the tent and the tent was hit flat in other words it was complete victory but after the dream you gotta have interpretation you see I can't have a dream and not have interpretation to our young people out there you are misinterpreting the dream you think that the dream means for us to use violence anytime we're upset but you've been through this educational system a system that sometimes looked at you and said you could not learn but you've made it all the way to college and you already got your degree and you gotta use your God sense now just because they said violence you ain't got to give in to it uh, I have a dream today uh, but I come to give you the interpretation of the dream uh, the season is right for prophecy uh, we are in the best season of American history uh, yes the stock market is up and down uh, yes there's violence in the street uh, yes there's police brutality uh, but it's all just being cooked up by God uh, to bring us to the table uh, to where we look up to heaven uh, and say God we got to bring you in uh, we used to put you out uh, but now we got to bring you in uh, and when we open up Congress uh, we say oh Lord uh, we need a word uh, when we open up the Senate uh, we say oh Lord uh, we need a word uh, when the president gets around his council uh, I want to hear him say oh Lord uh, I need a word uh, God knows how to tear it down God knows how to tear it up God knows how to shake it up until you finally begin to trust in the name of the Lord so the Bible says that they run up to Gideon and say Gideon we got a message for you it's been text message it's a text message from heaven and it says you shall have the victory I come to send a memo to everybody listening under the sound of my voice you shall have the victory I come to send a text message to the black community you will have the victory I come to send a message to the Latin community you will get the victory we'll all come together no black or white and we'll be able to stand together in the portals up under God I come to send you a message your family is gonna be blessed I come to send you a message our community is changing I come to send you a message education is getting better I come to send you a message that our homes are coming together in the name of Jesus and we declare it to be so I have a dream that one day we gonna come together and say Lord we we believe you uh, so say it so listen as we're standing I have a dream rooted in Gideon's dream when Gideon heard the dreams interpretation he began to worship he worshiped before he went to war I've been praying Lord what are you doing in this season another incident took place and we'll find out the details much later on but now y'all saw what happened happening in Seattle and people talking about we're going to take over the whole blocks 
And the man, listen, the mayor and them, they said they fine with it, whatever. But there's some dangerous stuff taking place. That ain't a part of MLK's dream. Certainly not the dream of God. He does not desire for anarchy. God is a God of order. So I speak rebuke to every preacher that would condone a lack of order. It is not a part of our culture. It is not a part of our heritage. We are dignified people. Classy people. We know how to cut you and you don't know being, you've been cut. We are educators, doctors, and lawyers. We are financial representatives, teachers, mechanics, painters, and our blood runs deep in this country. Marcus Garvey promoted getting on a boat, going to the Caribbeans, taking an island, and just making a new nation. You can read the, read, the, read the doctrines of Marcus Garvey, powerful. But people like Du Bois, Du Bois, Washington, Booker T, Ada B. Wells, Ida B. Wells, they had a different vision. And that vision is that we're here now, so why don't we till the ground and make this nation what God called it to be. It was God that spoke out of the forefathers. Yes, some of which who own slaves, those of you who want to go down that track. But God spoke through them and had them right, maybe without them even knowing that all men are created So now if we can just start there and decide we don't want to be ignorant and decide we're going to have enough love. God has already sent a dream. Get in. I'm closing. He went into battle expecting to use swords. God told him, no, just get in a lamp. Come on, preachers. Say, just get some light. Did y'all hear that? Facebook. Just get some light. And when I give you the cue, break the vessels and begin to yell the sword of the Lord. And when they did that, guess what? The enemy scattered. We are going to lean into black on black violence in our community we cannot allow you to terrorize anymore you have to be confronted we're not going to sit around in our little houses and allow for you to misrepresent your community anymore cannot allow you to fail out of school we cannot tolerate it anymore and then of course other groups come in and Mwah, 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 and act like they doing you a favor when every time they come in we get worse I preach the gospel to you this morning that if you have Jesus Christ and him crucified we have more than enough to change the landscape of our country I want to pray for you right now some of you have bitterness and anger in your heart I know how you feel I know how you feel. But I got to shake my flesh and say, wait, 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 wait. What is God saying? I told him this week on the Tuesday night Bible study, I told the, the women of God that I was teaching with, I said, y'all, I got to admit I'm discouraged. I'm hearing some stuff from preachers that's acknowledging foolishness. It's not of God, y'all. Not of God. We're going to make sure that as we have our pure protest movements they're not hijacked by enemies that after they're done with you doing their bidding they're going to leave you right behind 
Ain't you tired of being used? Well, it's time for you to stand up and do what God said. Dear gracious Father, I bless you for your people. You had me to preach a strong message today about the dream you have. A dream in which all of us would come together. That we would see through all of the smoke. Dear Lord God, we pray for those who are in the various movements that are trying to fight for justice, the pure justice that you desire. We ask that you would protect them. As the church, we pray for them. And we ask that you would protect them. Give them wisdom and knowledge. Cause them not to be bound by any group, any ideology. And we pray that you would be in the middle of it. We pray for our children. Oh, God. This pandemic, this shutdown. Lord, they opened up the liquor stores and shut the church. They opened up the weed dispensaries and shut the church. And so now our people are in a worse condition than they ever were before. Help us speak out on the right things. Help us to call out the enemy, no matter who he's in, when he speaks his lies. Bless every ethnicity and Lord God bless America. And Lord, we come asking that through this souls would be saved. That people would get closer to you and not a political party. Closer to you and not a university. Closer to you and not a social experiment closer to you and not psychology rhetoric closer to you because Lord we can't do it without you we love you and we turn our life over to you again in Jesus name amen come on celebrate him all over listen if you heard this word and you would like to join this church, we invite you to join. We invite you to join. What we want you to do is fill out the connect card online and we want you to join. We are not in a place though, I just want to be clear. When the spirit of the Lord is on me, let's be clear. We're not going to mince our words. Because what I'm noticing is, in the last season, we were all, oh no, no. Okay, come on. All that. Backtracking. While the enemy was raising up foolishness. Not going to happen. The church is opening up at Bethesda. And if you want to be saved, if you want to hear the word with fidelity, if you want to worship God in spirit and truth, if you want to hear the word with truth, if you want to come into a multicultural church that respects all people, you ain't got to worry about justice. You ain't got to worry about how somebody going to look at you. If you want to be a part of that church, when we open up, I want you to be here. Oh, yes. I know I'm closing, but there's racism in some churches. I'll deal with that next week. Next week. Am I right about it? You go in there. Many black man going there with his white wife black woman going there with her white husband they looking at her sideways what's wrong with you it's just the skin I'm in I thought y'all cared about the soul I told my daughter Essence I don't care if he green she told me she liked black men but I said Look, I don't care if he green I want him to be baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost and I want him to be holy and have a job Please have a job. Because I ain't even going to listen to the first three. If you ain't got no job. But we should be past that already. So clearly we're not. We got to pray for our law enforcement. Well, not get rid of them. We got to pray for them. Because when somebody breaking into your house. I want Y'all sit down in here. I'm sorry. Give me two more minutes then I'll close. Listen to the ignorance of their, of their conversation, Reuben. First they tell you, don't have a gun. Isn't that what they say? 
is that don't have no gun. When a criminal is going to have a gun, by the way, but they told us, don't have no gun. Then they saying, we're going to get rid of the police. <laughs> so you don't want me to defend myself and you're going to get rid of police. Stop all that foolishness. And anybody following all of that, stop all of that foolishness. What we need is to be better. I got another message while I'm on it and then I'll close. Decent black folk in this country have never asked for white people to come and be washing our feet and going through all of these fake ceremonies. Wearing kink day claws and kneeling down. Stop all of that. TV photo op stuff. The only thing we asked was, please don't be racist. Because after you put on, and it was disrespectful to put it on anyway, putting on kente cloth, righteous garments for a photo app. But anyway, after you kneel down, president can invite all the black people he want to around the table. You do whatever you want to. After you do that, we going to know you by your fruit. So the only thing that I ask, maybe I should speak for myself. I think I'm speaking for most of the people that I see here. Just don't be racist. Just don't hate me. I like you. I've watched your movies growing up. I think you're pretty cool. So to think that you still see me as the N-word is ridiculous. No, just forget all the ceremonies. Forget all of that. Just do right. Can the church say amen? Dear gracious Father, I bless you for your people. I ask that as they're giving, the Lord God, that you will cause them to be better after this word. I pray that it settles somebody's spirit. And I pray that blessings come from it. For the purpose of it, Lord, was simply to give them a dream. Not to stir up confusion, but to bring us in order. And I love you for it. In Jesus' name. Please give an offering. Please text B2 EXP to 77977. It's going to allow for us to do the ministry we need to when we open up. Now, before in the last season, I talked to you about my Brown Boys project. It was hard to get buy-in. Now y'all see why I push for the things that I push for. We've had the African American Ex Academic Acceleration Program here on site. Now you see why we do that. Now you see why I had us start a daycare. But it takes your giving and your commitment in order to make it happen. If you truly believe in some of the stuff that I've seen you putting on Facebook, you will support your church. We need scholarships funds. We don't want our babies to be blackmailed. They should be able to go to any university they want to. That's what we sow into. We want our brown boys not to drop out and join gangs. We want to, right now, our, our black girls are going to university at higher rates than our black boys. But we need more. But that comes from your giving. When the church is free from blackmail, it can do what it was called to do. And I promise you, I ain't got no new Cadillac sitting outside. In fact, the elders told me I need to get something. They said, your car is raggedy, pastor. It's falling apart. Wheel shaking. All kind of stuff going on. Because this is a grind, so I need, you to, I need you to give today. And then I need you to like and share. Will you do that? Glory be to God. Keep us in prayer in the Fresno Unified School District. I found out this week I'm one of only five black principals in Fresno Unified. And so as we work with our district, who's leaning into the work, we want to make sure we become a place for all kids. All kids. Nobody left behind. Yeah, you're finished. So listen, tonight we have service at 6 p.m. I want you to get on. It's going to be a powerful message. Amen. It's going to be a powerful message at 6 p.m. I want you to be with us Tuesday night at 7. I want you to be with us Wednesday 
on the telephone. Is it on telephone or is it on Zoom? The noonday Bible study, Elder Grizzly. On phone. On the phone line at 12 on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Bible study as well. I want to see you there. And when are we opening up? Independence. July, the first week in July. July 5th. July 5th, we opening up. For those of you who have a young person in your house who graduated from high school, please have them contact the church. I want to celebrate them. I think we only got five right now, but I know that there's more. I want to celebrate them on June 28th, I believe it is. That's the last Sunday of the month. God bless you and may keep you. And remember, you are a champion.